Hi, I'm Terry Strongman at Theron Kirama Chiraki. Thank you for selecting this video on gleaning some uh, practical, what does it say on the front of the astral world book up here, right? It says, true occult knowledge gives you practical power and strength. So, this is going to be a discussion here of something from chapter 6, Disembodied Souls. We're going to get some practical power and strength from this. All right. That, that chapter, which I just uploaded here, so get familiar, you should familiarize yourself with the general, you know, the overall content of that chapter. It's a short chapter. They're all short in this book. But Disembodied Souls. Here, let me, I'm just going to read a little bit to you, and then, then we have something to talk about. This is going to be getting some practical use from this book, all right? All right, we're going to expand on something here. You will notice that our vibrations are now changing and growing more intense. We're now entering a very wonderful subplane, or rather one of the subdivisions of such a plane. The entry to this subplane is strictly guarded by the law of the astral and watched over by some very high spiritual influences. This region is the resting place of the disembodied souls for some time after they have left the physical body. In it, they dwell in peaceful slumber until nature performs certain work in preparing them for their new plane of life. This stage has been compared to the cocoon stage between the stage of the caterpillar and that of the butterfly in which stage a complete transformation is effected. That's going to be important for us here. A complete transformation is effected. And we are now on this subplane. Enter a contemplation, enter into a contemplation of its wonders. With all reverence and love of all mankind, on all sides, stretching away as far as the eye can see, you perceive the slumbering forms of disembodied souls, each astral form resting in dreamless sleep. That's going to be important for us too. <clears throat> and yet, even if you were not so informed, you'd recognize that these forms are not dead, merely sleeping. There is nothing in the atmosphere of death or corpses in this region. It's not. And you feel the presence of great spiritual entities. Yet you cannot see them, not even by astral visions. These are the great spiritual guardians of this realm who protect the slumber of the souls at rest herein, the great watchers of the sleeping souls. And, uh, where, where's, uh, yes, the mind of the dying person, in the majority of cases, but no matter what, sooner or later, this is what happens, right? The mind of the dying person sinks into the slumber of the so-called death. That'll be important for us too. The slumber of the so-called death and awakens only after a period of restful, transforming slumber upon the astral here in this sub in this region. Alright. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> now that's a scene uh, of a subdivision of a division of the astral plane. Alright. Where the slumbering souls are. All right. Let's invoke the law of analogy, so you get some practice with that. I, do, I better keep this open, so I can refer to a couple of those phrases I told you to be aware of. All right. The law of analogy, metaphysical law of analogy. Yes, there is literary analogy, and there's logical or, or you know, informal logic analogy. Um. You know, these words, in, in the literature case and in the logic case, the functions involved <clears throat> in, in making an analogy work, one that is stated or written, a, you know, a, a linguistic analogy, uh, what they refer to is something in reality. You know, facts of the matter. If the analogy is, you know, sound. All right. It's strong. If it works, if it actually refers to something, well, it's referring to something about reality, and that structure, that that ana that analogy structure, you know, this is to that as this prime is to that prime. It's, you know, it's two comparisons being put together to make a comparison. All right, there's yeah. 
two similarities, yeah, whatever. You know what it is. Okay, look. The metaphysical law of analogy is that which, uh, you know, is, is the analogy that's being the, the actuality, the reality, the metaphysical analogy that's there, just there. And we're pointing it out when we do a literary analogy. If the literary analogy actually refers. <clears throat> okay, it refers to something in reality. All right, let's use this law of analogy. This this metaphysical law of analogy, I, I just put so much time into telling you what it is. Because it's important. It's one of the ways reality works. It's not just some epiphenomena, some accident, you know, that, that it's like that. Like, as the result of some much more fundamental things going on. It is one of the fundamental things going on. Patterns and relationships among things repeat it's like a formula, let's say. And the formula gets used at many different times, at different levels of, 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 of cosmic manifestation, at different planes of activity. You find the same formulas at work. Like one of them is an analogy of things. You know? So th this whole idea that, that these patterns repeat, that patterns repeat, that's an analogy going on right there, the big one. That's the metaphysical law of analogy at its most basic manifest level of manifestation, you know, correspondence among planes. So we can point to that. We can also use that to figure things out or to, to, to understand what's really going on, how things relate to one another. This can give us very useful information. You'll see, here's an example. That's what we're going to do right now. And I want you to learn to think like this, okay? Because analogy is one of the basic fundamental operational principles of the cosmos, of, of manifestation. Of, yes, right? Of the manifested cosmos, of how it works. I mean, another one is rhythm, Right? Another one is opposites, or polarity, you might say. Polarity, opposite. All right, all right, M moving on. What we see here is a great slumber, a slumber, all right? What's to say about it? it? says something about what? A cocoon stage, peaceful slumber. Uh, a complete transformation is affected. Um, what does it say here? Also, blah, 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 blah. Merely sleeping. Um, slumbering forms of disembodied souls. Dreamless sleep. All right, what's this sound like? That you're familiar with. In, in most cases, in, in the general case, every night you go to sleep, and there's a there are dream states, right? Dream states, you know, REM, REM, rapid eye movement. But that's not the only stage of sleep. It's not the only thing that occurs when you're sleeping. You know, there are other states of of sleep, stages of sleep that don't involve dreaming, like. Deepest sleep, whether that's, you know, I think there's a little bit of controversy or disagreement or inconsistency among views uh, regarding how many stages of sleep there are. Maybe there are four, maybe there are five. That's the last I knew years ago. I don't know what's being said now, all right? But, I mean, it depends on how you count REM, you know, wh what number you give it. All right, so uh, anyway... Dream sleep is not deep slumber. Deep sleep, what we call deep sleep, you know, like we say, you got to get your deep sleep, your dreamless sleep. You know, there's a, you know, you're not dreaming all the time. There's, there's this deep sleep in which you don't dream. All right, that's what I'm referring to here now. All right, here's the, here's, here's, here's my first direct statement of an analogy going on. That deep slumber 
on the astral. That deep slumber, what's it called? What's he say here? He says, um, nah, nah. You know, I would like to be able to just turn to things when I want to see them. But it doesn't always work that way, does it? Um, all right. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, where is it now? There's some call it the, of damn. Uh, oh, come on. You're going to have to just excuse me for a minute while I look for this. I was looking for this before I made the video, too, and it took me a while. But then I thought, all right, I got it. I got it. Oh, come on, man. So-called that right here. In the majority, you know, the, the mind of the dying person sinks into the slumber of so-called death and awakens only a period of restful, transforming slumber. Okay. Slumber of so-called death. All right. Look. The astral, that astral event. And I'm saying what we do every night when we enter dreamless sleep is analogous to that. Look how many things are, are the same about it. Here, what's going on. It's a different level of the same thing happening. A different plane of it happening. Now, what can we get out of this? What can we take from it? Well, I would say that in, 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 in except in, in, Rare, extraordinary cases, in which case laws are not being broken, things are just operating a little differently. Uh, I'm not sure how to explain them, but I would say that in almost every case, when you're in deep, yes, when, when you're in deep sleep, yes, I'm pretty sure of this, when you are in deep sleep, you are protected. Just like the slumbering souls in the astral world. They are protected. Nasty stuff can't get there. <clears throat> and when you're, when you, when you, it, so I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. Bad stuff can happen to people in their sleep, I guess. Yes, yes, yes. I've had bad stuff happen in my sleep, I think. But, you know, I don't know it's real nature. For sure. I was asleep. All right, so. <laughs> But stuff sort of seemed to be happening that was not, you know, paranormal type stuff. All right, well, but when, if this stuff involved, did not involve dreamless sleep, I was either in a dream state or, or, in, or in some kind of like, what do they call that, uh, sleep paralysis state, you know, like awake. Or I was awake. None of this is dreamless sleep. I'm talking about dreamless sleep here. Such as was being talked about there on the astral plane. The slumbering souls. Now, all right, so our analogy is, it would indicate that it's the same basic formula is, is at work here, just in a, at a different level of activity and um, at a different plane of manifestation. So we're using a somewhat different level of discourse about it. Yeah, we're talking about sleeping in bed now. All right. But anyway, we're protected. We can get that out of this. I think it's safe to do so. Okay. It also talks about, you know, uh, this is the real, if, if there was anything as a real death that happens, that's it. The slumber of death, of so-called death. See, that's as dead as it gets. Apparently, so far, at least in, the, in, our, in our understanding of what's going on here as we take this journey through the astral world, to gain practical power and strength from true occult knowledge. So here's some, let's just say, we're going at this book like it's true occult knowledge, and we're looking for the practical power and strength in it. Because that's what it says on the front of the book. True occult knowledge gives you practical power and strength. All right, so this is a, that would be as close to death as it gets, really. That's, that's, the, that's the great sleep right there. Then the real life after death begins when the soul awakens from that slumber. But a, compl but a total transformation has been made, or the preparations for a whole new life 
are being made. So, yeah, it's a transformation. It's like the cocoon stage. Okay, so look, what can we get out of that for our understanding of going to sleep at night and getting deep sleep? So this must be, if it's dreamless in both cases, perhaps very similar, very deep things are going on. And if there's the presence of very high spiritual influences that are protecting this, well, what's going on when we're in dreamless sleep while incarnate every night? Why would this happen in a daily cycle? Well, just like that great slumber is necessary, Things to move on and evolve, go to their next phase. There's something happening with the soul, right? At the soul level, because that's what's there. Whatever that soul is comprised of, at least at this point, it, it involves the astral body, because that's what's present there, visible by astral vision in that astral plane, that division of the astral plane. That's what we're seeing is slumbering forms of souls, right? But it's an astral form that, but then there's more to it, shoot, I'm sure. You know, the higher plane components. All right, well, anyway. Um, what can we get out of this? That every day is a new day? There's been some transformation take place. There's been some soul renewal. A rest, a real rest at that deep level. At that level. Much like the rest that's taking place, except that's between lives. This is between days. But just as that is necessary... Maybe this one is too, for us to have a new day. And if we don't get that deep sleep, we're missing something very critical out of, at the soul level. This is like dying every night. If that rest, if that restful slumber, all right, the the, the slumbering souls, right. If that is the slumber of death, that. Consider the parallels here with deep sleep during our lifetime, our incarnate lives, and the, the depth of activity that's going on there. And that, that is as close to death as we're getting every day. And we have to do that. It's like we must have that interaction, that deep transformation, that that communion, perhaps, that's going on? A soul communion with its source, whatever? I don't know. I don't know exactly, but I've heard that things like that are, are pretty good descriptions of what's really going on. But the reorganizational activity, the, the, the moving forward, we have to learn to take advantage of that, you see. Because when we wake up, our circumstances have evolved only as much as, well, I don't know, maybe some more dust fell on the floor while we were sleeping. But we are prepared when we wake up, if we've had deep sleep, if we're sleeping healthily, if, we ever, if we're not doing things in our lives to screw up our sleep cycle, if our brain chemistry is working as it should, if it's, you know, everything working right when it's respect to sleep, you know, the average, the general, the rule of the matter, uh, nature's rule of thumb over it, let's say, um, then, you know, you're getting your deep sleep, and when you wake up, it's like coming out of a cocoon, in a sense at the degree to which it's happening here in this life, every night. But our circumstances haven't changed much, perhaps. It's the same thing. We wake up, 
it's another day. Same old shit, different day. But we have undergone a cocoon-like transition. If we fall right back into the same attitude, the same moods, if they are not constructive, if they are not positively charged, if they are not, yes, constructive, if they are not in favor of our personal involvement, our constructive personal involvement, if they are not in line with, yeah, okay, whatever. If it's, if, 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 if our way of thinking, our feeling, our way of being, the next day is the same nastiness that it was the day before, then we've lost an opportunity. Circumstances, outer circumstances may not have changed, although they will have to some extent, some very minimal, some unnoticeably, others quite noticeably. While we were sleeping, like while you were sleeping, this is what happened. <laughs> but we have a new start available. Yes, there's a lot of continuity and so forth. But what I'm saying is, here's an opportunity to practice self mastery. To practice knowing what's going on, based on true occult knowledge gleaned from the astral world, watching what happens, what's going to be the case with you in your great slumber. It's like uh, a bigger a bigger event of the same basic thing going on as when you get in your sleep at night, your deep sleep. So just consider the ramifications and the consequences of that happening in the astral case the slumber of death case, and, and, and notice whether, you know, those consequences, those effects, those results, those ends are occurring analogously when you get up, to, you know, every day for you or not. Well, part, of, part of that is up to you, you see. You're not waking up into a whole new life. You're waking up into a whole new day. Conditions that, as far as you can see, may not be different very much from yesterday. But you have the opportunity to be. Yeah, there's memory and recall from yesterday. Sure, there is that. So that's an inhibiting factor. But it's one to be aware of. Know where this stands. Get the analogy. Apply it to the best of your ability. I mean, where there are missing pieces for you, you know, from this analogy for you and your everyday activity, maybe you can fill them in by knowing that you can do that, that you have that opportunity, that it is there to be done, and it can happen. It may take practice, but knowing that that's a possibility for you to make, make an, an improvement in how you approach each day, knowing what you have available, what has just taken place when you were in deep sleep, knowing what it's analogous to. Well, you can bring about the analogical results of that, too, to, to the extent that they will happen. See, this whole thing is, you know, the deep sleep thing at night is a lesser degree taking place a lower degree of it taking place. The great slumber of death. Well, so is what you're going to be able to, you know, accomplish out of that. And it's taking place every night. You know, it's not like once a lifetime. You know, it's a, it's a lesser scale thing. So, but make sure you're getting, you know, doing all you can, knowledgeably, knowingly, to make the analogy you know, to fill it in for yourself. It's there to be done. All right. I mean, this is where memory of the past, which seems to have been an inhibiting factor a moment ago, and it was, 
But here's an advantage of it. You, 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 you get to make this improvement knowingly. You have the memory of how you were yesterday. Fine, yeah, it's going to be better now. You, 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 you have the wherewithal to do that. Okay, so, yeah. There we go. There, there's, there's some, wouldn't you say this is practical power and strength? Some practical power and strength gleaned from, from two occult knowledge as provided in the astral world? I would say it is. All right, so there you have it. This is, uh, I'm Turk Stroman. But, oh, by the way, remember, if you, if you like the video, give it a thumb up now. And if you haven't done so already, please take the time right now to subscribe to this channel. Activate the notification feature. Share the joy of the channel with others. You heard it first. Right here. With the rank here on my track. I'm Turk Stroman. Be well.